Welcome back to a new video in which we'll dive deep into use cases to see what they are and when should we use them. So what is a use case? It is simply a task that our app can do and it holds or it encapsulates the business logic of this task. So let's understand this with an example. Let's say our app can send a payment. This is a task. Let's now create a use case out of it. So this use case first will get a transaction ID by calling some function in our repository, sending the sender ID, for example, and receiver ID with the amount to get that ID. And then it will create the transaction object that holds the ID, the sender ID, the receiver id the date and all the data for this transfer like the amounts and so on and then it will send the payment that's the third step now and then it will get the result whether this was a successful payment or not so this is the business logic behind this task which is sending a payment or a transaction a bunch of steps that need to be executed in the right order. Let's also give an example of registration. We can create an account in our app. So this could be a use case that just makes us registrate. The business logic behind this use case now is going to be, first of all, verifying if our email is not empty. So we do have an email and then the email form is actually correct. And then we want to make sure that the username also is valid and is not empty. And also the password the same and then we will check if the email is not already used so it's an, a unique email and then we will try creating this account by calling the register function in our repository for example and then after that we'll get the result so these are the steps behind registration and this could be a use case that holds the business logic of this task so this is in general what a use case is a task that our app can do and also this task can be reusable because we put these use cases in the domain layer which is completely isolated from any frameworks or outside dependencies like context any database or anything like that so in domain we only have kotlin plain code which means we can take this use case and use it in some other project like a kotlin multi-platform project for ios for example and if this use case has any underwood resources special thing then we won't be able to reuse it so we actually build these use cases in a way that we can reuse them and then locally unit test them so let's now see this in code so here i am in this underwood studio project in which i have two packages for payments and another one for authentication of course i don't do any real payments or authentication this is just to give you an example of how this works so here we have the payments package in which we have our repository which is the payments repository abstraction right here we have the function start transaction in which we just give it a sender id and a receiver id it returns a string that could be a transaction id and then we have send payment function that takes the amount the sender and the receiver and then the transaction id that we get from this function and then get transaction result in which we just get the result of this transaction by giving it an id we have the use case as i said in our domain layer so here we are in the domain layer we have this package for use cases in which we have the send payment use case of course you can easily name it use case if you want like this but let's just name it send payment now let's check it out here it is we inject an instance of our payments repository from the constructor of this class which means we'll use some dependency injection library like dagger hails or queen and then we'll simply create an instance of this one and then inject an instance of our payments repository if you want to understand dependency injection i will leave you the video of queen and also dagger hails in the description if you want to watch them to understand how dependency injection works and here we use the operator function invoke for it will make naming this use case better we won't have any function like funds send payments or so in fact we just have this invoke so whenever we want to use this we will actually use it without calling any function and i will show you this as well so inside this suspend operator function invoke we send the amount of the transaction the sender and the receiver ids and then we get the transaction id by calling our, our repository start transaction in which we send the sender id and receiver id we get the transaction id we then send the payments with the amount and all the necessary data and then we get the result so this is the business logic for this task which is sending a payment that's great and if you want to use it you just try this in our main activity even though we would use this in our view model we can just create an instance let's go here and then write val send payment is going to be a send payment like this we can import this and then we need to inject our repository from here of course we would use a dependency injection module but in this case we don't have it anyway we will going to write send payment 
like this, and then we can pass all the necessary data like this. Of course, since it's a suspense function, we would have to have it inside something like, in this case, lifecycloscope.launch. So this is how we would use it. And of course, this would happen in our view model. Okay, great. And if you are enjoying this tutorial so far, you will definitely like my premium course in which you will build an industry level app with its own kit or backend in which we'll use differently these use cases and a lot of clean architecture concepts that you would need in the Android industry. If you want to take your skills to the next level in building Android apps, then check the premium course in the description. Now let's see some things that we need to know about these use cases. First of all, our use case should do only one thing or one task. And thus, it shouldn't have more than one public function. We can have more private functions, like helper functions, if we want here, we could have private function do something, okay? But in a use case, we should have only one public function. So this one must be private because our use case must do one thing. And so we should call the function of that one thing, which is the invoke operator function. And then the use case name should exactly tell what this use case does. That if we want to understand how this payment feature works, we could just go to our use case package and see all the use cases that we would have. And then we would have an idea of what this payments feature does by just looking at all the use cases that we would have in here, because these are all the tasks the things that this feature can do like sending a payment and so on and they said this use case should not have access to any external dependency thing like for example passing an instance of our context like private var context like this this is incorrect because now we can't reuse this send payment use case if we want to use this in a kotlin multi-platform project for example because in desktop for example we don't have context we only have this in android so it should be completely isolated from any external libraries things and we can only access our repositories that we also have in our domain layer and also we shouldn't access any other layer like the data layer that we don't have and also the presentation layer so this use case shouldn't know what send payment does and what start transaction does it just holds the logic and execute these in the right order so then we can test this and also reuse it if we want great so this is now the first use case let's have a look at the other use case that is in our auth and here as well so auth repository that has a function to register us to make us log in to get an access token and to authenticate of course to authenticate is just when we open the app and we are already logged in we don't want to re-log in or we'll show the login screen again to the user we just want to make them authenticate directly using an access token and then this one returns a boolean whether we can actually authenticate or not and of course the register takes an email and username and password login takes a username and password and this one gets us the access token. Now let's have a look at the register use case that we have in here. So what this does is it takes an instance of our auth repository again, the operator function invoke, it takes an email username and password, and then we need to have some business logic going on in here, like validating our password, our email, our username, and these also could be different use cases. So we can come here and then create another one called, for example, username validator. And that username validator use case will hold all the logic behind validating a username. Like it has the correct length, special letters, and doesn't have a number, for example, and so on. So we can definitely put that inside a different use case that is the username validator. And then we can just inject an instance of that right here if we want to. In this case, I put all the logic behind validating the, the data right here, and then I register the user. Of course, if this, for example, returns a Boolean, then I can just return like this. This will give me then the Boolean I need. So if it, it is like this, and here it can be false since I couldn't log in or just to, okay? We can also check the other function or other use case, which is the authentication use case that makes us now authenticate. And this one now is showing us something that we shouldn't do, okay? So don't do this, please. The problem here is that we have two public functions or probably even three in this use case, which are the register use case, login use case, and authenticate use case. So these are now three different things. And when the user seeing is now this authentication use case, they might just think that this is for when we are already logged in and then we just want to open the app without showing the login screen again. But if they open this use case, it 
they will find it's completely different. So it really doesn't describe what this task exactly is for. So we need to break this down into three different use cases. We already have the register one. We need to create another one for the login. So we take this one, put it in a different use case using the invoke operator function for better naming and ease of use and then take this authentication one as well and then completely get rid of this one since it has three different public functions anyway and then we can also overload this invoke function if we want so let's just remove these errors now by going back like this we can overload this by actually copy pasting this one and let's say this one only takes an email and a password and now we don't have to check this and for the username it's just pass something or null if it can be nullable for example you may say now we have two public functions but this is overloading and when will this be useful or well, you know what let's actually show you this in the other uh, use case which is sent payment i think you would understand that better right here so let's go here sent payment and let's duplicate this invoke function or let's overload it and now this one doesn't take a receiver id in fact it takes something like an account number of the receiver and this could be a long for example like this and then we can send it like this and then we can write dot to string if we want to and then account number dot to string and as you can see since we can send the payments in two different ways like with a receiver id and with an account number so we just overload this function and then in our repository we call the one we need if we have a receiver id then we send the receiver id if we have the account number then we call the account number this is overloading and it's completely okay even though we have two public functions but this is just overloading and this is valid actually so this is it for this one and now let's see a real app in which we use use cases okay and here we have this app, you just close all the tabs. And this is the note app testing that we created in a playlist, which is the testing playlist. And here we have the search image use case. So we can search an image and then eventually we get a resource of this image that is in the end. Uh, let's check that. This object that has maybe a list of strings or images. So we don't only get one image, in fact, a list of images. And this use case now gives me a flow and holds all the business logic so if the query that we want to search for is empty then we return an error and then our ui can do something with this error for example showing a toast or doing whatever our ui needs and then we try getting our error from our repository our image i'm sorry from our repository by giving it a query if we had any exception then we just return an error again and then if our image is not null then we return a success if it was null then we return an error so this is a use case that we use in our app and to see where we use it we can just go to the view model presentation let's just close this and that is add node view model we have this search image use case and here is where i used it but i seem to have the same name as this one so you just add some that's right here and then rename it here as well like this okay so we have the function and then we have the search image use case that of course has this operator invoke function where is that here it is and then all we do is we pass the query we need to it as you can see and then we get the flow and then all the results the other use case we have here is absurd note that again holds the business logic so title description url of the image that we want of the note and then we check if those are not null or empty or whatever business logic we need and then we try absurding it or first of all creating a note item and then absurding it and then return true when it's absurded when it's not we return false we can check that we used it in our view model somewhere. So absurd notes use case. And as you can see, here is where it was used. And of course, we can just take this, use it in any other project since it's not accessing any other framework, any context, any database, or anything like so. And it doesn't know how this absurd thing actually works because that's it, that is in our repository. I don't know if I have any other use case, but now I think you are already understanding how this works. A task our app can do. In our feature, we can upsort a note, we can send the payments, we can authenticate, we can delete a note, we can do whatever we want, and we can extract that or put it in a use case and have the use case have all the business logic for that. And that's it for this video in which we learned everything we need about use cases when should we use them what shouldn't we do inside them like having two public functions and so on and if you want to use these use cases in a real industry level project then check my premium course in the description in which you will build a large scale industry level app and also if you want to support me subscribe and leave a like to this video see you in the next video bye